Hey y'all, today's video is going to be a follow up to this video where I laid out in detail the mistakes that were keeping me stuck at bra strap length. If you haven't seen that video, then I suggest you go and watch it after you finish watching this one. However, if you have seen that video, then you'll know that at the end, I briefly mentioned making a second video addressing the more fundamental issues with your hair care routine that could be the reason you're stuck at a growth plateau. So here it is. In this video, I'll be giving you all the information I think you need to grow your hair out of a growth plateau that's likely occurred at armpit length or above. So whether you consider yourself chin length, shoulder length, afro length, or middle of the trapezius length, I strongly believe that the information in this video is all you need to get yourself finally to bra strap length. In this video, I'm going to address each variable of concern within the hair care regimen in three categories. First, moisturization of the hair. Two, maintenance of the hair. And three, habits with our hair. So, let's begin. The foundation of our hair care routine is moisturizing, which is why we shall designate it as our chronological start point. The purpose of this point is to infuse your hair with water. And the way to accomplish this is on wash day with a lineup of good products. And of course, water. So what are these good products? I can hear you asking already. Moisturizers, i.e. any conditioners or creams, should be free of silicones. Cleansers should be free of sulfates, but also silicones. Because yes, nowadays they really do be sneaking silicones up in shampoos. Y'all know those oxymoronic moisturizing shampoos your favorite natural used to use back in the day where she'd be like, oh, this shampoo is so moisturizing, I could literally detangle my whole head with it. Silicone, sis. But I digress. These metrics are the standard for the curly girl method, which I'm sure most of you are aware by now because it's been, if not the prominent hair care method in the natural hair community for over a decade at this point. So if you're not already on it, first of all, I don't know where you've been, but it's okay. I recommend it as the best place to start. It's never too late to start. However, if you're coming from a background of silicone use, then know that you'll also need a sulfate shampoo still free of silicones, to start uh, before you get up and running on your curly girl method new natural hair care routine. Then the last thing everyone will need is a heavy oil or butter for sealing the moisture into your hair. I'm going to tell you the products I use, but only because lots of people have asked me in previous videos, and because I know if I don't say it again, twice as many people are going to ask in the comment section of this video. But before I do, it is imperative to understand that it's not about which particular products I'm using, but why I chose to use these products. So namely, for what is or isn't in them, okay? With that said, for cleanser, I like to use the Terra Essentials Mud Wash. However, if you're a person that prefers shampoo, then I use this Palmer's Coconut Shampoo for many years and I really like it a lot. But if you get to the point in your hair journey where you find that even that's too drying, then I highly recommend trying out a clay wash. For conditioner, I like to use the Oyen Handmade Honey Hemp Detangling Conditioner and their hairdo as a leave-in. However, I also really like Melon Hair Care's conditioner for either purpose. And then for sealing, I recommend Plain old castor oil. I will leave the links to where you can find these products down below in the description box, just in case any of you are interested in looking into them further. Now into category number two, maintenance. We will consider this to encompass all remaining elements of our hair care routine. The purpose of this point is to maintain the moisture imparted from wash day. And we'll be starting off strong with arguably the most important element at this stage, styling. And as much as I know nobody wants to hear it, Protective styles are an indispensable tool for 4C hair, especially at a growth plateau. Not only are they important for reducing tangling, but they're also one of the keys to moisture preservation in our hair. So if you're the kind of natural who feels like your hair is always dry by midweek after wash day, then you likely need to reevaluate your styling practices. Any variation of braids, twists, 
and or a combination of covering the hair with you know silk or satin and then follow that with scarves hats beanies whatever you like to use should do the second element of our maintenance routine is re-moisturizing the purpose of this practice is to re-infuse moisture into the hair to prevent excess drying before the next wash day. In the grand scheme of hair care, this is actually optional because arguably there are a myriad of ways to render the step unnecessary, like for example, just washing more frequently. However, if you are a natural who has not yet mastered how to keep your own hair moisturized, then this step is not optional for you. Not yet. As for frequency, my recommendation is once a week. All of us should be able to retain the moisture from a proper wash day for at least seven days. Listen, I can feel the way some of y'all looking at me sideways through the screen right now. Yes, even with 4C hair, it is possible for you to maintain moisture from wash day for seven whole days. If your hair is drying out before then, it means there's an issue with either your products or your styling. And I encourage you to find out as quickly as possible where exactly the issue lies for you. If you're a product junkie or you love switching up your styles, you can make a game out of it. Like see which product style combination keeps your hair moisturized for the most days after wash day. But for simplicity, the re-moisturizing routine that I recommend is simply just spray your hair with water, add some leave-in conditioner, and then seal it with castor oil and be done. Then the only experimenting that will be required on your part is to figure out how much of each of those products is appropriate for your current style. So yes, naturals everywhere rejoice in knowing that no, you are not required to spray your natural hair with water every day for the rest of your life. Won't he do it? Now onto our third category, hair habits. This category comprises the things that we do to our hair infrequently, on a small scale, and even things that we don't even recognize is really important because of how unconsciously we do them. First up, trimming. The purpose of trimming is solely to prevent the damage that has occurred at the ends of our hair from affecting the healthier parts of our hair. So it is important, but definitely not the crux of long healthy hair that the natural hair community has made it out to be throughout the years. A trim does literally nothing for hair growth. Say a louder for the people in the back. The most it will do for you is one of these three things. A. Immediately improve manageability by reducing snagging that had been occurring by single strand knots or split ends. B. Improve the appearance by getting rid of worn thinning ends that may have been affecting your shape or fullness. C. Provide the delayed gratification of keeping the hair that's already on your head in better shape for longer. Unfortunately, outside of these things, a trim is incapable of doing anything else for you. No, it will not make your hair grow faster. No, it will not find you a man. No, it will not make Rona leave us any faster. Rona! My name is Dexter, and no, we have not met. So what you gonna do is you gonna pack your up and head out. This video is not gonna age well. <laughs> For frequency, I recommend once every six months, just because that's a schedule that's easy to stick to. Once in January and once in July. From then on, just pay attention to your hair. If you notice you have a lot of single strand knots, trim. However, if you notice that this keeps happening, where you're having a lot of single strand knots before your six month period is up, then that means you likely need to change the way that you style your hair. More specifically, you need to implement a style that keeps your ends stretched better. Additionally, if you notice you have a lot of split ends, that means your hair has been chronically dry at some point between now and your last trim. So you need to either improve your moisture or once again, your styling habits, or maybe both. On the contrary, if six months rolls around and you feel like your ends are in peak health, then there's really no reason to cut them. If no damage has accrued, there's nothing to cut. But for the sake of keeping a routine, I would recommend just lightly dusting them anyway. But you can also postpone the full trim for a few months and just continue your monitoring. Now, let this put an end to all of your trimming woes, please. Next, try not to get caught up in over detangling. This is a bad habit I adopted when I reached about shoulder length. There's really no need for a hair to ever be 100% detangled, especially in its curly state. And it's actually causing a lot of unnecessary breakage as well as wasting a lot of time because I know that all of us have experienced at one point or another, the fury of finding a new tangle in a section that we had just finished pouring our blood, sweat, and tears into detangling mere seconds ago. The sooner we let go of the Eurocentric idea of perfectly detangled hair, 
the happier we all will be. Lastly, I want to say be careful and cognizant of everything that you put into or onto your hair. This starts with what you sleep on. Are you properly protecting your hair from cotton and other drying fabrics when you go to sleep? When you get dressed on your commute to work in winter from your scarves and your jackets and your other heavy clothing? Next is hair accessories. Do you make sure that they don't have hair on them when you pull them out? Bobby pins that rip out stray hairs, metal free hair bands that still wrap around and tangle your hair on the way out, any jewelry, accessories you put into your hair, make sure that they come out clean. Because if this is something that you do on the daily, it is enough to sabotage your hair health. Especially because it's such a small thing, it tends to go unnoticed until one day you wake up and find a thinning patch of hair exactly in the place where you like to pin your hair up every day. Please don't wait until then to notice. <laughs> now this also includes what you put into your hair for protective styling, namely synthetic hair. I know how popular and convenient it is for people to put in protective styles using synthetic hair. But all I want to say is, if you're going to do so, make sure that you know that your hair is truly, assuredly, indubitably moisturized. The one time I twisted my hair up in a protective style with synthetic hair, I couldn't feel my own hair underneath that at all. So I couldn't tell whether it was moisturized or not. Thus, to err on the side of caution, I re-moisturized my hair every single day during this period to ensure my hair didn't dry out. However, the braid hair was so thick that I was doubtful that the leave-in conditioner and castor oil I was putting on every day was even getting to my hair underneath. Needless to say, I could not wait to take those out. <laughs> so honestly, I would strongly, strongly recommend just protective styling with your own hair at first so that you can learn how to keep it moisturized. And if you currently do protective style with added hair and have reached a growth plateau, you feel like your growth has stagnated and will not grow past a certain length, I would say now is a good time for you to make that switch and also do the same. And that's everything. Now, if you're particularly astute, you may notice that I didn't mention protein. That was intentional. Honestly, it's not something you need to worry about if you've got a normal regimen using store-bought products. You can definitely grow perfectly healthy, waist-length, 4C hair without ever doing a single protein treatment. Unless like, you know, you live in the Amazon and your hair products consist solely of concoctions of fruit and other local flora, then we could talk about protein treatments. But right now, it's just an unnecessary layer of confusion that you don't need to worry about in my opinion, just like porosity. And I, oh, <laughs> we'll save that for another video. Once you've mastered these elements of your hair care routine, your hair will grow to bra strap length. These are the fundamentals of natural hair care that should take you from short to medium length without much fuss. But know that if you do them really well, they will take you straight to your hair goals. But if at some point in your journey, you find yourself at another growth plateau, then be sure to come back and check out this video and make sure that you haven't adopted any of these crucial hair mistakes. That is all. I will see you in the next video. Matane. Bye.